Okay, in the final video, we are going to just do a bunch of examples, and I'm going to show you specific cases when they look a little bit different and the answers look a little bit different. We're just going to factor. We're not going to add any more steps. We're just going to practice. Okay, so factor the following expression. Using my steps, I'm going to go ahead and factor. First of all, is there a negative or a greatest common factor? There is no negative out in front, and there is no greatest common factor. That means I'm going to go ahead and multiply A times C, 1 times 42 is 42. That adds up to 13. What are the factors of 42? And remember, if you don't know, you can use a website. So I have 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14, I believe, 4 and, no, 5, 6 and 7. Okay, adds up to 13, 6 and 7, so I have x plus 6 and x plus 7. Multiplies to 42, adds to 13, are 6 and 7. Now, I don't need to divide my 6 and 7 by anything because my leading coefficient is a 1. So that is my final answer, and that's in Math Excel what I would put in my box. The next one, factor the difference of two squares. What does that mean? Here's a special case, difference of two squares. All this means is that your middle term cancels out. So if I were to write this out, it would be plus 0x minus 9, meaning the two numbers are going to be exactly the same. The, the 0 is what they add to. So if I look at this and I say, okay, is this a perfect square and is this a perfect square? They both are. 4, the, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3. So as long as, here are the rules, okay, the rules for a difference of two squares, okay, your two terms are perfect squares, and there is a subtraction in the middle, okay, two are both perfect squares, and there's subtraction in the middle. You take the square root of the first one plus the square root of the second one times the square root of the first one minus the square root of the second one. So what it's going to look like is, what is the square root of 4x squared? 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. And that's your answer. The difference of two squares if this is how you factor. And we'll practice another one here in a minute. Okay, factor out the greatest common factor. This one does not have two binomials, but we do have a greatest common factor. 21x squared plus 9x. Well, 21 and 9, greatest common factor is 3. So I know I'm putting a 3 in front, but notice they both have an x. That is also a common factor. So we can take out an x in each one, and we're going to divide both terms by 3x. Divide by 3x, divide by 3x, so what am I left with? 7x plus 3. And you can't factor that anymore because there's no longer a squared. It cannot be factored into two binomials, so that is your final answer, and that's what goes into the answer key in Math Excel. Make sure you don't keep trying to factor it if there is no more squared. The next one, factor the following expression. First thing I'm going to do is look for a greatest common factor or a negative in front. This one does have a negative in front, so let's go ahead and factor that out. So I'm going to put a negative in front, and then I'm going to change all the signs. So I have x squared minus 22x plus 40. And then I'm going to go ahead and factor it from there. 1 times 40 is 40. That adds up. Factors of 40 that add up to negative 22. Factors of 40 are 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, and I believe that's it. What would add up to negative 22 but multiply to negative 40? Negative 20 and negative 2. So I have negative in front, x minus 2, and x minus 20. That's your final answer. We don't need to divide 20 and 2 by anything because 1 is my leading coefficient. That's what I would plug in here, and don't forget this negative or it will mark it wrong. Factor the expression. So let's just do an example. Okay, we have 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. And these numbers don't necessarily co 
correspond with your math excel um, these are just from previous ones this number will if you can find that number this is the example of that one so 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 so what is 2 times 12 since I don't have a greatest common factor or a negative in front 24 factors of 24 that add up to 11 1 and 24 2 and 12 3 and 8 6 and 4 add up to 11 or 8 and 3 so I have x plus 3 and x plus 8 so now since I have a leading coefficient of something other than 1 I have to divide by 2 divide by 2 and that's going to and reduce if possible 3 over 2 does not reduce so I'm going to take the 2 put it in front of the x and I'm left with 2x plus 3 x plus or I'm sorry 8 over 2 does reduce to 4 so I'm left with x plus 4 and that's my final answer that goes in the box factor completely here's another example of the difference of two perfect squares notice 4r squared and 196 are both perfect squares if you're not sure let's find a calculator if you're not sure what the square root of 196 is you can use a calculator to check okay I have a square root button so 196 the square root is 14 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna the square root of 4r squared oh not yet square root of 4r squared plus the square root of 196 times the square root of 4r squared minus the square root of 196. Remember, the middle terms are going to cancel just like the example we did in the beginning. The square root of 4r squared, square root of 4 is 2, the square root of r squared is just r, so I have 2r plus, and we just found out the square root of 196 is 14. And then this one, 2r minus 14. And the reason this happens, I'll just go ahead and show you. If I were to check this, this would give me 2r times 2r is 4r squared. 2r times negative 14 gives me negative 28r. 14 times 2r is plus 28r. 14 times negative 14 is negative 196. What happens to those middle terms? Negative 28 plus 28 is 0. So they cancel, so I'm left with 4r squared minus 196, which if you look, is what we started with. So to factor completely, my answer for this one works. It is the square root of the first one plus the square root of the second one times the square root of the first one minus the square root of the second one. That is my final answer. Factor the trinomial or state that the trinomial is prime. When you see this, this prime just means it cannot be factored. So if you see an example like this, if you can't factor it into two binomials, that means it's prime. First, we have to check to see if it's prime before we decide. So I have 5x squared plus 8x minus 21. There is no negative in the front, and there's no greatest common factor. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to write it down here so you can see it. Whoops. There we go. Okay, 5x squared plus 8x minus 21. No greatest common factor, no negative in front. So 5 times negative 21 is negative 105. That adds up to positive 8. So what are the factors of 105? Oops. Well, 1, 105, 2, 3, and I believe 35. Let's use our factor finder, which I did. So 3 and 35 is 105, 5 and 21, and 7 and 15. So 3, 35, 5, 21, 7, 15. So 3, 35, 5, 21, 7 and 15. Which one of those adds up to 8 but multiplies to negative 105? means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. Well, if I look, 21 minus 5, no, 715. 
If I have a positive 15 and a negative 7, I get positive 8. So there it is. So I have x minus 7 and x plus 15. Don't forget, since we have a leading coefficient of something other than 1, we have to divide our terms by that leading coefficient and simplify if possible. 7 over 5 does not simplify, meaning you're going to take that 5, put it out in front, and I'm left up with 5x minus 7. 15 over 5 is 3, so I have x plus 3. And that's my final answer. Factor the trinomial. Well, first we have to see if there is a greatest common factor. Now, this is a large number, so a trick to do this is to pick your smallest number, write out the factors, and see if your other numbers are divisible. So make sure I'm going to go through this very quickly, so make sure you pay attention. So my smallest number is 56. I want to know if it has a greatest common factor. Factors of 56 are 1 and 56, uh, 2 and 28. 3, nope, 4, and 14, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So there they are. Now, is 121, let's look for my calculator here, is 121 divisible by 56, first of all? Let's look. 121 divided by 56. No. Is 121 divisible by 28? No. Is 121 divisible by 14? No. Is 121 divisible by 8? No. Is 121 divisible by 7? No. Is 121 divisible by 4? No. Oh, well, it's not looking good. And we know it's not divisible by 2 because it's not even. So that means there is no greatest common factor. That means you're going to have to factor this enormous um, trinomial or quadratic. So in order to do that, you're going to need the help of factor finder. So I have 56 times 63. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's 56 times 63. Whoops. 3,528. So I want 3,528 in here. And there are quite a few of them. But we don't have to move them over to the other one. We know that we want the difference of them to be 121. So we have to go through this and decide, okay, which two have multiply to positive 3,000 whatever and add to 121. So we want positive 3,528 add to 121. Well, which ones look like? If you added them together, you would get 121. Well, none of these. These are all way too big. 121. Well, what's 98 plus 36? It's close. 84 plus 42. 126. 49 plus 72. And there it is. 49 and 72. If you want to check that and make sure... 49 and 72. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So I have C plus 49 and C plus 72. And then divide by 56, okay, because I have that leading coefficient of 56. And then I have to simplify if possible. And these are divisible, and they do simplify, but none of them are perfect, so we have to be careful here. Simplify 49 and 56. Well, both of these are divisible by what? by 7. 49 divided by 7 is 7. 56 divided by 7 is 8. So I'm going to take the 8, put it in front, so I have 8c plus 7. I'm using the black numbers. 72 and 56 are both divisible by, oh, 8, 9, 10, Maybe not. Let me think here. Uh, common of both of these is 8. 
So I had to take a minute and think about it there for a minute. I've been doing too many of these. So divide both of these by 8. This would give me 9. This would give me 7. I'm going to take my 7 and put it in the front. So I have 7C plus 9. I'm using these numbers for my factoring. Now this one, 6, that point nine point thirty is going to be difficult. You're going to actually have to spend some time with this one. If you need help, that's fine, but make sure you go back and look at these and use the steps. There's no greatest common factor, so you're going to use very large numbers and your factor calculator. Let's do another one. So I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. Well, I don't have a leading coefficient, or I don't have a greatest common factor, or negative, so I'm going to find factors of 16, 1 times 16, that add up to negative 8. So factors of 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. And I want to add up to negative 8, but multiply to positive 16, so I have negative 4 and negative 4. So I have x minus 4 and x minus 4. Now, if you put that into your math Excel problem, if math Excel has one like this, it may mark it wrong. Because what it wants, even though your answer is right, what it wants is x minus 4 squared. x minus 4 times x minus 4 is the same thing as x minus 4 squared. So even though your answer might be correct, if you have something that repeats exactly the same, it may want you to write it like this. If it's a multiple choice answer in a standardized test and you can't find your answer that looks like this, it's probably written just like this. 